Here's a warm-up question to get us ready for the optimization section of this calculus course. This question we could probably solve without calculus, but it'll be useful for us to use our knowledge of calculus to solve this problem so that we understand the strategy to use once we get more complicated optimization problems. The question reads, a lifeguard has 200 meters of rope and some buoys with which she intends to enclose a rectangular area at a lake for swimming. The beach will form one side of the rectangle with the rope forming the other three sides. Find the dimensions that will produce the maximum enclosed area. So our main goal here is to figure out the max area. If we want to figure out the maximum area, we're going to need an area function and then figure out when is that function at a max. And so far in this unit, we've learned that we can use calculus to find when functions are at a max by using critical numbers and a first or second derivative test. So we're going to have to start by coming up with an area function for the area of the rectangle I've drawn here but an important thing, we need an area function that describes the area of a rectangle with these three sides. Remember, the beach forms one of the four sides. So an area function for a rectangle that has these three sides, where those three sides can only add up to a length of 200 meters. So we have a constraint on what the perimeter of those three sides can be. I'll talk about that more in just a second. Let me remind you, the area of any rectangle is length times width, right? But we want to come up with an area function that describes the area of our very specific rectangle that uses only 200 meters of rope. So let's use that constraint. So often we write off to the side, we have a constraint, and the constraint tells us that, and I've, the way I've labeled this, I've labeled this side and this side the length, and notice they're the exact same because it's a rectangle, and I've labeled this one the width. Now it wouldn't matter which one you labeled length or which one you labeled width, but we'll just go with this. Now the constraint it gave us is that this plus this, so two lengths, plus this, the width, can only add up to 200. So I would say 200 equals two times the length plus the width. What we're going to do with this information is adapt our area function so that it's a function of only one variable. And that function tells us the area for the rectangle that has a perimeter of 200 meters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this formula I made over here to isolate for w, and I would get w equals 200 minus 2l. And what this rearranged version of the formula does, it tells us what the width would be based on whatever length we choose to keep the perimeter of that rectangle at 200. So what we want to do now is we want to replace the width in our area function with 200 minus 2L. And then what we have is an area function written only in terms of length. We'd have length times 200 minus two times the length. So this gives us the area of a rectangle that the three sides that we need with the rope add up to 200. We choose whatever we want for the length and then adjust the width accordingly so that it keeps the perimeter at 200. And we want to know, when is this function at a max? It'll help maybe if I expand this. So that would give me 200L minus 2L squared. And let me just rearrange this so that I have the terms in proper order. So I'll put the negative 2L squared at the front. Now you may notice this area function. This is just a quadratic that opens down. So if we can figure out where the vertex is, that will allow us to figure out what we would make the length so that it has a max area. But let's use calculus to solve for this. And maybe it'll help if I give you a visual demonstration of what's actually going on here. So here, if you can imagine the x-axis as the beach, and then the shaded area uh, is made up by the rope formed around the outside. And I have Desmos telling me the calculated area right here. Notice as I change the length, the width of the rectangle is automatically adjusting based on that formula we came up with. The width was equal to 200 minus two times the length. And then I have it shading in the rectangle that it forms. So we're wondering which of these rectangles has the biggest area. And notice the rectangle doesn't exist when the length is 100 because then we'd have no rope left for the width. And of course the rectangle doesn't exist when the length is zero because then we don't have a length. So one of these rectangles in between, a length of zero and 100, 
has the maximum area. And if we pay attention to those calculated area values, it looks like 5,000 is the maximum area we get to. So how are we going to come up with that algebraically? Well, here's that area function graphed. And we came up with that area function length times 200 minus 2 times the length, and we expanded that. But there it is, graph. There's that quadratic. We want to figure out what's the value of the length that gets us to that max area of 5,000. Well, notice at that point, the slope of the function represented by that tangent line is 0, which means the first derivative at that x value would be 0. And what's the value of the second derivative there? Well, it's negative, meaning concave down. So if the second derivative is negative at a point and the first derivative is zero at that point, we know we have a local max point, which means we have found the max area. So let's go ahead and do all of that algebraically. So what I need to do are find the critical numbers. Oh, maybe I should make a note about the restrictions on the domain of our function. If you look at our diagram, of course we have to have a length, so length has to be bigger than zero, but the length has to be less than 100 because if this length was 100, that means that's 100, which means we've used all of the rope and there's no width. So the rectangle doesn't exist. So our length has to be between zero and 100. And we know the area at a length of zero and the area at a length of 100 is zero. And if we plug either of those values into the area function, you'd notice that we get an area of zero. So what we have to do is find the critical numbers between zero and 100, and then we'll classify them as either local max or min. And we know it's going to be a local max because the quadratic function opens down. I can tell that based on the leading coefficient here, but we'll use our calculus to classify it. So to find the critical numbers, we're going to be looking for when is the first derivative zero or undefined. So let me find the first derivative. It would be negative four L plus 200. That's just a linear function. It can't be undefined, but it could be zero. Let's solve for when this is zero. And if I solve this, I will get 50. So when the length is 50, the slope of the original function is zero. That's what we just solved for. That could mean that we have a local max, a local min, or neither. We'll have to test to see. And we could test using the first or second derivative test. I'll use the second derivative test. That's going to be easiest for this. So what I do for the second derivative test, I have to start by finding the second derivative. That's easy, it's just negative four. And that means the function's always concave down. So if I evaluate the second derivative at my critical number, it's also going to be negative four. Therefore, the area function at a length of 50 is concave down. I know that because the second derivative is negative. Therefore, there is a local max at the point 50 and then whatever the value of the area at 50 is. And we can calculate that by plugging 50 into the area function. So our conclusion, there's a max area of, and then we'd plug 50 into our area function to calculate it. So if we plugged 50 into our area function, we'd have 50 times 200 minus two times 50. So 50 times 100, that'd be 5,000. So when we evaluated A at 50, we got 5,000 meters squared. Max area of 5,000 meters squared when the length is 50 meters and the width is, and how do we figure out the width? Well, we know the length. So if I take my length of 50, plug it into this equation, which tells me the width, I figure out the width was 100, right? So our rectangle is 50 by 50, by 100. That uses 200 meters of rope, and that gives us the max area of 5,000 meters squared. So where the width is 100 meters. All right, so that's our warm up. We'll follow this same strategy as we do the next three optimization problems.